हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम सुशील गुप्ता फिजिक्स फैकल्टी एट होली क्रॉस आश्रम स्कूल दतिया इज स्टैंडिंग हियर टू टीच यू फिजिक्स फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ चैप्टर वन मेजरमेंट एंड एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन एज यू ऑल नो दैट नाउ डेज आर कंट्री इज सफरिंग फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एपेडेमिक डिजीज एंड यू टू दिस डिजीज वी आर नॉट एबल टू हैव आर क्लासेस इन द मंथ ऑफ एप्रिल and in this regard our school is taking the honor of having online classes for the students so that we can make our students academic better so let's begin our today's class of physics so chapter 1 is measurement and experimentation since childhood only we are measuring small small things in one way or the other which are present around us if someone tells you to measure something a line or something you might have done in maths also then you are using this device which is named as ruler or scale for measuring the length of the devices is it in the same way if your mother sends you to buy 1 kg of sugar from the market then you go and see that the weight of the sugar should be 1 kg whenever you are taking you are comparing the weights so first of all we have to study that what is measurement the question arises that what is measurement so first of all we should be clear with the definition of measurement you might have studied in previous classes also what is measurement according to the definition it is the process of comparison of given physical quantity with standard quantity means if any of the physical quantity we have to compare with the standard quantity of same nature then the process is known as measurement this is also very necessary that of same nature they should be of same kind is it so measurement is the process of comparison of given physical quantity with the standard quantity suppose for example if we have to measure the length of this stick without using scale or in previous times how the people used to do it can anyone answer yes we can use our hand as a standard for measuring the length of the stick or we can choose anything else for measurement of the length of this stick if we are using this hand then one hand two hand and almost it is three hand from my side is it so the length of the stick is three hands from my hand but if i am taking the standard as this pen then it is one pen two pen three pen and almost it is four pens so you can see in these two values that the measurement the length of the stick is varying for in first case it was equal to 3 hands and in next case it was equal to 3 pens so if the standard quantity will be different definitely the measurement the length of the stick will also be different in this regard we are using standard system of units so that we can have only a particular value throughout the world and the standard values for standard values we can choose its scale you are using this ruler from childhood only whenever you have to measure anything then you we are using this scale so if we are measuring the length of this stick with a scale it is 15 cm plus 15 then again 15 and then it is almost 10 so 15 threes of 45 and 10 it will be 60 cm so what is the length let's see the length of the stick is equals to 59 cm according to the measurement now if you take this stick to be measured whether in dadia whether in dabra gwalior in delhi or anywhere in the world it will be equal to 59 cm only because they have chosen 
this standard is came to be measured therefore this process was stepped in order to have only one value throughout the world therefore we are choosing this standard system of units there are number of system of units first system is cgs system second is fps system and third one is si system of units we are using a number of systems that we are going to discuss later now first of all the question arises that what is unit so according to the definition of unit unit is the quantity of constant magnitude which is used to measure the magnitude of other quantities of same nature suppose if we have to measure the length or the weight the time anything if we have to measure then how we can measure we can measure it by the standard values if we have whenever we have to define any of the physical quantity it is very necessary to define two it in two things first one is numerical value and second one is unit so how we are writing it see any of the physical quantity is represented by two things first is numerical value into unit suppose if i have written 9 meters is it so this 9 will be numerical value and the unit will be meters so from this meters we can find out that this is the length of an object so by this we come to know that for defining any of the physical quantity numerical value and unit both are very necessary now we are going to discuss that on what factors the choice of unit depends what are the factors how we can choose that what quantity what unit we have to use so there are three important conditions for defining a unit what are those three important conditions first one is that unit should be of proper size unit should be of proper size it means suppose if i have to measure the length of this pen so what will be the unit which suitable unit by which we can measure the length can we measure the length in kilometers no because kilometer is a bigger unit therefore it will be quite better to measure the length of the span in centimeters so here we will be using centimeters if i have to measure the distance between dathia and dabra we all know that it is 30 kilometers why we are representing it in kilometers only why not meters or centimeters because it is a long distance so it is one of the important condition of unit that the unit should be of proper size second thing it should be reproducible what is the meaning of reproducible it means we can express it in smaller terms also and we can express it in bigger terms also both is from smaller to bigger and from bigger to smaller it should be well expressed in any in everything it means that the unit should be reproducible next one is unit should not change with time and space it should not change with time and space it means wherever we are measuring the length the weight the mass the quantity should be fixed only if i measuring the length of this marker 
in Dhatia, it is 12 cm. It should be same in London. It should be same in Delhi. Everywhere it should be same. It should not change with time and space. And the last condition on the choice of unit depends is that we should be able to define the unit without any problem. We should properly define it without having any problem. So this was on the choice of units that on what factors the unit depends on what factors we can choose that whether the we have to use smaller units or whether we have to use bigger units now moving forward moving further into the chapter we are going to study about kinds of units now the next topic will be kinds of units Basically, units are of two kinds, fundamental and direct. So, units are of two kinds, fundamental units and derived units. Fundamental units are also known as basic units because these type of units are independent of each other. They do not need any type of derivation. But in derived units, we cannot say it verbally. We have to use the formula and then we can find out the respective unit. Mainly, they are fundamental units are 7 in number. Length. The standard unit of length is meter. Symbol, small m. Time. The standard unit is second. Mass. The standard unit is kilogram. So all these, are we requiring any formula for the derivation? No. Therefore, these will come in the category of fundamental units. More fundamental units are temperature, standard unit, Kelvin, is it luminous intensity, current, we have to study, standard unit, ampere, which is represented by capital A. So, all these will come in the category of fundamental units. Now, derived units are those which need the derivation. We are taking the help of fundamental quantities in derived quantities. For example, if we have to find out the standard quantity, standard unit of area, then what is the area? Formula, length into breadth, meter into meter. So, meter square will be the standard unit of area. We have used the formula, we have used the basic units, fundamental units, then only we are able to find out. Therefore, area will come in the category of derived units. Second, volume, it is equal to length into breadth into height. Standard unit of length, meter. Breadth is also a type of length. So, again meter. Height is also a type of length. So, again meter. So, the standard unit of volume will be meter cube. Another formula, speed. What is the formula of speed? Distance upon time. Distance is the type of length. Therefore, the standard unit will be meter and time it will be second. So, derived quantities are much more as compared to those of basic quantities and or we can say fundamental quantities. Fundamental quantities are basic. They are independent in nature whereas derived quantities are totally depending on fundamental quantities. Without fundamental quantities, we are not able to derive the units for derived quantities. Moving further, we should know that how we can use the units for bigger measurements and for smaller measurements. 
for bigger measurements and for smaller measurements how we are going to use so we are using prefixes for bigger measurements also and for smaller measurements also prefixes can be used for big measurements also and for small measurements also first of all we will be discussing the prefixes for small measurements first one is deci it is 10 to the power minus 1 second centi 10 to the power minus 2 milli 10 to the power minus 3 micro 10 to the power minus 6 nano 10 to the power minus 9 and so on we will be using it so for example if it is written 2.8 milliseconds so what does it mean it means that its actual value is 2.8 milli means 10 to the power minus 3 seconds. If it is written 7.9 microseconds then it will be 7.9 meaning of micro is 10 to the power minus 6 seconds. So in this way we will be using the prefixes for smaller measurements. The table is given in your book. So you can just see. For bigger measurements, we will be using another prefixes. For bigger measurements, we will be using deca. Deca means 10 to the power 1. And it is equals to 10. Second one is hecto. It is 10 to the power 2. That is 100. Third one is kilo. We are using it basically in our life. 10 to the power 3. It means 1000. Mega. 10 to the power 6. Means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Suppose it is written 1 kilogram. Then what does it mean? It means, kilo means 10 to the power 3 grams. Or we can also say it as 1000 grams. Okay. So this was all about prefixes of bigger and smaller measurements also. You have to learn these tables. In next class, we will be discussing about system of units and further units of length, mass and time. Thank you for today's class.